A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today is 5th of February 2022. The list of articles we are going to discuss today is displayed on the screen. You can go through it. Let's start our discussion. Look at this news article. This news article mentions about the attempt to amend the preamble to the constitution using a private member's bill. See, before starting our discussion, look at this question asked in the previous year preliminary examination. See, questions related to the preamble are often asked in the preliminary examination one year or the other. So, kindly pay attention. Now, let us see some facts relevant to the examination about preamble and its amendability. See, the literal meaning of the word preamble is an introductory part that states the purpose and aims of a document or a statute. So, similarly, preamble to the constitution of India is an introduction to our constitution and it precedes the constitution. It outlines the aims and objectives of the constitution and sets out the purpose, principles and philosophy of the country. So, it is a guide to the nation. And note that preamble was enacted after the entire constitution was already enacted. See, basically, preamble of the present constitution is the modified version of the document called the objective resolution of the constituent assembly. This objective resolution laid down the fundamentals and philosophy of the constitutional structure and it was anonymously adopted in 1947. This is the preamble. See, every single word in this preamble is highly important for the examination. It declares India as a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic and a republican state which draws its authority from the people. It also intends to provide social, economic and political justice to its citizens. Additionally, it assures them the liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship. It also assures equality of status and opportunity. Then it aims at securing a fraternity based on dignity of the individual and it aims at securing the unity and integrity of the nation. And it signifies that the power is ultimately vested in the hands of the people. But is a preamble part of the constitution? See, initially it was not regarded as the part of the constitution. But this stance was changed in the Keshavananda Bharti case of 1973. In this case, Supreme Court held that preamble is a part of the constitution. Here, the court even restricted the amending power of the parliament under the article 368 of the constitution. It held that the basic element of the preamble cannot be amended under article 368. As you know, article 368 grants power to the parliament and lays down procedure to amend the constitution whenever there is a necessity. In this 1973 case, Supreme Court held that the basic element of the preamble cannot be amended under Article 368. So, so simply put, preamble is a part of the constitution, it can be amended. But the basic feature or the basic elements in the preamble cannot be amended under Article 368. By this, Supreme Court contended that if any of the basic elements mentioned in the preamble is removed, the structure will not survive. So basically, Supreme Court held that the objectives specified in the preamble constitute the basic structure of Indian constitution which cannot be amended. So, has the preamble been amended ever? Yes, the preamble has been amended but only once, in 1976. It was amended by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. It added three new words. They are socialist, secular and integrity. This amendment was held to be valid. That means it was held that this amendment did not amend the basic element of the preamble. Now, on similar lines, a private member bill was brought by an MP to amend the preamble, particularly for changing the word socialist and replace it with equitable. See, when a bill is introduced by a member other than a minister, it is known as a private member's bill. Now, the member who introduced the bill to amend the preamble is arguing that the term socialist was added through 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. So, it can be amended and it would not amount to amending the basic element of the preamble. Let us wait and see whether it is introduced and passed in the parliament or not. So, in this article, we have seen 
what is a preamble it is an introduction to the constitution and it is a part of the constitution it has been amended only once that is in 42nd constitution amendment act it added three new words they are socialist secular and integrity so finally as a part of the constitution preamble can be amended under article 368 but the basic structure of the preamble cannot be amended that's all regarding this article now we will move on to the next news article now let us take up this article it mentions about the particulate pollution or particulate matter pollution in bangalore city based on two studies see the studies found that there will be 15% increase in pm10 emission from the 2019 levels it also found that the current pm10 mass concentration is around 1.3 times higher than the limit permissible by central pollution control board the studies also identified the biggest contributors to air pollution in bangalore they were transportation road dust construction dust domestic fuel and diesel generators see the transportation sector contribute the most pm 2.5 pollution while the soil dust contributes more to pm 10 pollution and the studies have also suggested these measures to curb pollution kindly go through this see these data and suggestions are expected to contribute to the action plans which are framed under ncap which is national clean air program so in this regard let us revise about particulate matter pollution and ncap see the particulate matter is shortly written as pm it is the term for the mixture of solid particles and liquid droplets found in the air some particles such as dust dirt soot or smoke are large dark enough to be seen with the naked eye and other particles are so small that they can only be detected using an electron microscope and they are the particulate matters it includes pm10 and pm2.5 see here pm10 are inhalable particles with diameters that are generally 10 micrometers and smaller and pm2.5 are fine inhalable particles with diameters that are generally 2.5 micrometers and smaller and these particles can be made up of hundreds of different chemicals some are emitted directly from the source such as construction sites and paved roads fields smoke stacks or fires but most particles form in the atmosphere as a result of complex reactions of chemicals such as sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides these are the pollutants emitted from power plants industries and automobiles so obviously it has health impacts particularly when inhaled it can cause a wide range of respiratory disorders such as asthma chronic obstructive pulmonary disease because pm can penetrate deep inside the lungs and damage it that is why monitoring and mitigating pm pollution becomes important in this regard the national clean air program that is your ncap is an important initiative in particulate matter mitigation see ncap is a pollution control initiative that was launched by the ministry of environment forest and climate change It was launched with the intention to cut the concentration of coarse and fine particles of particulate matter in the atmosphere that is PM10 and PM2.5 this is envisaged as a comprehensive initiative in partnership with various ministries and states which will work to improve air quality at city regional and national levels these are its objectives Based on these objectives the goal is to meet the prescribed annual average ambient air quality standards at all locations in the country that to in a stipulated time frame so a tentative national level target was set that is a 20 percentage to 30 percentage reduction of pm 2.5 and pm 10 concentration in the atmosphere by the year 2024 so for this purpose Central Pollution Control Board has identified a list of polluted cities in which the prescribed national ambient air quality standards are violated and these are called the non attainment cities for these cities city action plans have been framed it includes the measures for strengthening the monitoring network reducing vehicular or industrial emissions 
increasing public awareness etc so overall national clean air program is a focused and time bound scheme to implement various sectoral policies and enhance public participation in more than 100 cities for effective air quality management see these are some of the initiatives under national clean air program you can go through it in this discussion we have seen about particulate matter which are pm10 and pm2.5 and we have also learnt about the national clean air program with these learned points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this editorial article here it is about the supreme court of india's recent ruling on all india quota the case before the supreme court was about the reservations in neat exam it involved a resolution of the issues around the implementation of obc and ews quota in the neat all india quota admissions to medical colleges so this is the background of the article given here in this context let us learn about the supreme court stand about merit and reservations and we will also discuss some of the important points mentioned in this article before that take a note of the syllabus given here for your reference first of all let us see what is the issue here see the government it has recently decided to extend the existing scheduled caste and scheduled tribe reservation within the aiq category to provide for obc reservation as well here let us take a moment and understand what aiq is see in medical counseling a category called aiq is there it stands for all india quota generally a number of seats are reserved in the state medical colleges for students domiciled in their respective states here domicile means students residing in that particular state the remaining seats which are 15 percentage in ug courses and 50 percentage in pg are reserved by the states to the all india quota so under this quota seats are filled on a domicile free that is all india basis within this category reservations are given for people belonging to scs and sts now the government has decided to extend the reservation for obc as well so as a result writ petitions had challenged this order on the grounds that the implementation of obc reservation would affect professional merit and cause reverse discrimination against general category candidates and another set of writ petition had challenged the notification of ews reservation EWS are nothing but economically weaker section another set of writ petition had challenged the acceptability of rupees 8 lakh as the income limit for EWS reservation so now this is the issue see we should understand why this issue has come up in india there has always debate about reservations because a section of people believe that the affirmative action is against the merit see the term affirmative action refers to a policy aimed at increasing workspace or educational opportunities for underrepresented section of society these programs are commonly implemented by governments by taking individuals race sex religion or national origin into account This affirmative action focuses on demographics with historically low representation in leadership, professional and academic roles. And this is often considered as a means of countering discrimination against particular groups. But the critics of affirmative action says that the reservations are against the merit. But there is other section of people who say that even though reservations violate merit it serves other purpose such as social representation see because of the existence of differing beliefs there has always been a contestation between merit and reservation now let us see the different dimensions in which the supreme court addressed this merit reservation contestation firstly the judgment recalls and reaffirms the principle of substantive equality rather than formal equality this only underlines our constitutional promise of equality of opportunity the formal equality here is a belief that for fair treatment people must be treated equally at all the times but the substantive equality explores the impact of the law on equality that is it is concerned with the effects of laws policies and practices and ensures that such laws policies or practices alleviate the inherent disadvantage experienced by particular groups 
In our constitution, formal equality is provided by prohibiting general discrimination on the basis of gender, race, religion, etc. under Article 15. Then under Article 16, it also provides equality of opportunity for all citizens in matters relating to employment or appointment to any office under the state. And more than this, the constitution provides the space to government to correct the historical inequalities through affirmative action that provides substantial equality. We saw what is affirmative action before, which in simple words means reservation. The judgment quoted this principle of substantive equality when it explained the need for reservation. And also it relied on the debates in the constituent assembly. Here the court reminded that the intent of the framers of constitution was to remedy real structural barriers that prevented the realization of equality of opportunity. The Supreme Court also built upon different earlier landmark judgments such as State of Kerala vs N.M. Thomas and Indra Sahani vs Union of India case. It reiterated that the provision of reservation in the Article 16, Clause 4 of the Constitution is not an exception but an extension of the principle of equality mentioned in the Article 16, Clause 1. It is not an exception but an extension of principle of equality. I have given these articles here. Read it for your reference. See, the judgment states that the reservations are crucial to achieve the goal of genuine equality of opportunity and status amongst all citizens. And reservation is one of the measures that is employed to overcome the barriers. See, the individual differences may be a result of privilege, fortune or circumstances. But it cannot be used to negate the role of reservation in remedying the structural disadvantage that certain groups suffer. Secondly, the judgment criticized the purely economic understanding of the claims of reservation. And this is because of the rigid nature of the socio-cultural institution of caste. To understand this, the Supreme Court judgment draws upon the work of K. V. Sham Prasad to recognize the role of a cultural capital. First, let us understand what is cultural capital. See, cultural capital is having asserts that gives us social mobility. Social mobility is nothing but the movement of individuals, families, household or other categories of people within or between social strata in a society. And these asserts are both tangible and intangible. But importantly, they are not related to income, net worth or any financial measure. See, cultural capital falls under three categories. Firstly, they are institutionalized, which includes education or specialized knowledge. Secondly, it is embodied, which includes personality, speech and skills. And thirdly, it is objectified, which includes clothes or other belongings. Here, the order holds that the cultural capital ensures that a child is trained unconsciously by the family environment to take up higher education or higher post that corresponds with their family standing. So, this works to the disadvantage of individuals who are first generation learners. So, the judgment is also attentive to the implication of the family habits, community linkages and inherited skills. So, in this context also, Reservation is the need for the people who face these kind of barriers. And thirdly, the judgment addresses the social prejudices that falsely prevails as concerns about efficiency of administration and the anxieties about the dilution of merit. For this, the judgment quoted 2019 decision in BK Pavitra was a state of Karnataka. The judge said that the benchmark for the efficiency of administration is not some ideal measured by the performance of a qualified open category candidate. See, efficiency of administration in the affairs of the union or a state must be defined in an inclusive sense where diverse segments of the society find representation. And finally, the judgment questions the heart of the matter which is the examinations as a matter of merit. It quoted the Ashwini Deshpande study highlighting a sharp separation between what examinations claim to measure and what they actually do. And the judgment cited Satish Deshpande's research also. It shows that often what examinations measure have an indirect and weak link to the task that the candidate is supposed to perform. So based on this, the judgment opens that exams can only reflect the current competence of an individual, but it will not reflect the scope of their potential capabilities or excellence. 
So citing all these factors, the Supreme Court has said that the claims of reverse reservation by the candidates from the unreserved category can be justified under the substantive equality. And this invites a stringent judicial review of the constitutionality of EWS reservation. This is because it overlooks the role of the cultural capital for general category EWS candidate and it fixes the same income limit for creamy layer OBC and EWS. See in the policy aspect, this judgment opens the way for designing examination that are free of linguistic, class, school boards and regional bias. So that's all about this article discussion. In this article, we have seen what is an affirmative action and the articles mentioned in the constitution regarding affirmative action. And we have also seen some of the Supreme Court judgment related to it. In the process, we have also discussed about cultural capital. It is nothing but having an assert that gives us social mobility. With these key points in mind, let us move on to the next article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article states that with the onset of summer, the seasonal migrations of wild animals has begun from the adjacent wildlife sanctuaries in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu to Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary. In this context, we will learn about Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve in prelims perspective. This is because Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary is a part of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. So before starting the discussion, look at the question that was asked in the preliminary examination 2019. So question of this type can be expected this year also. So kindly pay attention. See first of all what is a biosphere reserve? The concept of biosphere reserve was introduced and established under UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Program in 1971. The biosphere reserve is a voluntary cooperative conservation area. It is created to protect the biological and cultural diversity of a region while promoting sustainable economic development. Simply, it is balancing biodiversity with economic development. So it provides an opportunity to scientists and managers to experiment and cooperate in generating data for understanding man's impact on nature. It is a place where local people, government officials and environmental groups work collaboratively on conservation and developmental issues. See the two main biosphere reserve in Kerala are Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve and Agastya Malai Biosphere Reserve. The Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve was the first biosphere reserve in India established in 1986. It is located in the Western Ghats. It includes two of the ten biogeographical provinces of India. See, wide ranges of ecosystems and species diversity are found in this region. The total area of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve is 5,520 square kilometer, and the reserve encompasses parts of Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Karnataka. The annual rainfall of the reserve ranges from 500 mm to 7000 mm with temperature ranging from 0 degree Celsius during winter to 41 degree Celsius during summer. Now this point is important. The Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve falls under the biogeographic region of Malabar Rainforest. Kindly note that the Mudumalai Wildlife Sanctuary, Vayanad Wildlife Sanctuary, Bandipur National Park, Nagarholi National Park, Mukurti National Park and Silent Valley National Park are the protected areas present within this Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Kindly remember these national parks and wildlife sanctuary for the preliminary examination. So that's all regarding this article. Now we will move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article mentions that a self-disinfecting face mask has been invented. As you know, face masks have shown to be one of the most essential weapons in preventing the transmission of COVID-19. So in this regard, this new invention is very important for us. See, this is a novel invention by the scientist of a collaborative effort. In the collaboration, three entities were involved, namely the ARCI and the CSIR, CCMB and the Bangalore based private firm called Resil Chemicals. Here, this ARCI is an autonomous research and development center of Department of Science and Technology under the Ministry of Science and Technology. The mask is invented under the DST sponsored nanomission project. See, this mask is a copper based nanoparticle coated antiviral face mask. So, it uses copper based nanoparticles of around 20 nanometers. It is made using a FSP processing facility that is flame spray pyrolysis. 
See, FSP is a manufacturing technique to mass produce engineered nanoparticles. In FSP, an aqueous metal salt solution is sprayed as a fine mist and this solution is called the precursor solution. See, precursor is basically a compound that participates in a chemical reaction and produces another compound. So, this precursor solution is sprayed through a capillary and into a flame. This is a high temperature flame within which the precursor solution decomposes and the organic compounds in it undergo complete combustion. So, this leads to a formation of primary particles of pure metals or oxides and these are the nanoparticles which are then collected. So, using the same method, copper based nanoparticle is created. See, after preparing the nanoparticle, a uniform layer of this nanoparticle was coated onto the cotton fabric using a suitable binder. See, a binder is needed for good adhesion of the nanoparticle to the fabric. So, after this, the mask will be ready. So, why do we need this mask? See, as you know, face mask reduces the spread of virus mainly through airborne respiratory particles. But the issue is, most masks available in the country do not exhibit antiviral or antibacterial properties. That is, they are not able to inactivate the virus when they reach the fabric. So, this makes it difficult to control the virus transmission. Why? Because the used mask will have the virus, so they can be easily transmitted to others even after it is disposed of. So, there is a vulnerability to wear conventional masks where the virus load is very heavy, that is particularly in hospitals, airports, railway stations, etc. Now, this problem is addressed by this new mask because it was found that this coated fabric exhibited an efficacy of more than 99.9% .9 against bacteria. That is why we call it an antiviral mask and we say it self disinfects. So, ultimately, this prevents further transmission of the virus. Therefore, the main advantage of the mask is it kills the virus and not just filters it. Additionally, this mask is biodegradable. It is also highly breathable and also washable. So, it can be reused. These properties are absent in a conventional mask such as surgical mask which we normally wear. Then, this mask exhibits high performance not only against the COVID-19 virus but also against several other viral and bacterial infections. So, that's all regarding this news article. With all this learning, now let us move on to the next part of our discussion which is the preliminary practice question. Look at this question. This question was asked in preliminary examination 2021. Let me read out the question. What was the exact constitutional status of India on 26th of January 1950? Option A, Democratic Republic. Option B, a sovereign democratic republic. Option C, a sovereign secular democratic republic. And option D, a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic. See, this previous year question may not directly mention the word preamble, but it is surely about preamble. Why? Because during discussion, we saw that the words socialist, secular and integrity were added by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1976. So, these three terms were not present in 1950. So, the remaining words might have been there. Therefore, we can eliminate option C and D as they have secular and socialist in it. Here, our correct answer is option B, that is a sovereign democratic republic. Look at the second question. This question is also regarding preamble. Which of the following statements is or are correct with reference to the preamble to the constitution? It is non-justiciable. Words have been added and eliminated from the preamble before and previously it was called objective resolution. You have to select the correct answer from the code given below. See, here statement 1 is correct because Non-justiciable means its provision are not enforceable in courts of law. That is, you cannot approach the court saying that the objectives are not enforced by the government. And regarding statement 2, it is incorrect. See, only once preamble has been amended. That do by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. It also added words that we have seen, but it did not remove any words. So, this statement is incorrect. And regarding statement 3, it is also incorrect. See, read the statement carefully. Preamble is a modified version of objective resolution. So, we can say that preamble is based on the objective resolution. And this does not mean that both are same. That is why this statement is wrong. So, our correct answer will be option B, one only. See here, the third and fourth question, both are previous year questions. 
and we have discussed enough about the preamble so you find the answer and post it in the comment section now moving on to the fifth question see the question consider the following first statement is biodegradable second is highly breathable third statement is single use and fourth statement is kills the virus so which of the above are the advantages of the copper based nano particle coated antiviral face mask developed by arci in collaboration with csir ccmb see here single use means it is designed to be used once and then disposed of or destroyed so here the single use statement is incorrect because we saw that the mask is washable which makes it reusable so if you eliminate this statement you will get the answer that is option d 1 2 and 4 only look at the sixth question This is also a previous year question which was asked in preliminary examination 2019 which of the following are in agastya mala biosphere reserve see in our discussion regarding nilgiri biosphere reserve we saw that vayanad wildlife sanctuary silent valley national park and mukuti national park these are part of nilgiri biosphere reserve so option b and c cannot be your answer and if you can guess that venkateshwara wildlife sanctuary and nagarjuna sagar sri salem tiger reserve is somewhat related to andhra pradesh you can eliminate this statement also and arrive at the correct answer which is option a now look at our final question consider the following statements particulate matter can be seen with the naked eye a tentative national level of target of 20 to 30 percent reduction of bm 2.5 concentration by 2030 is set under the ncap program which of the statement given are incorrect here the question is asking for an incorrect answer so look at the first statement this is incorrect because it cannot be seen with naked eye and look at the second statement this is also incorrect because the target is said to be achieved by 2024 and not 2030 so here our correct answer will be option c both 1 and 2 The main question is displayed here. You can write your answer and post it in the comment section. If you like the video, hit the like button, post your comment and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.